Thank you that you're here with us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you do. Thank you for being who you are, Lord. Thank you for all the names that name you, Lord. It's all wonderful. It's all true. It's all good. It's all right. Change my heart and make me more like you, Lord. That I may be an expression of who you are. That your spirit may flow through this vessel. That I may live this life according to your plan and your purpose and not my own. Praise you, Lord. So let it rise. Let the praise arise this morning. Let it rise through the musicians. Let it rise through the instruments. Let it rise through our voices. Let it rise this morning unto the King. For He is worthy. He is glorious. Take our praise. Take our efforts. Sanctify them. Kinds of that it may be pleasing unto you. May we not be doing our own thing. That man may be glorified, but that only you may be glorified. That you, O King, the worthy one, would be lifted up. Because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the conqueror. You're the mighty God. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the mighty God. And we lift our praise this this morning. May we sing your praise. May your praise arise in every heart this day. In Jesus' wonderful name we ask. Amen. And the song that I want to start up with today, it's saying, rise up. Rise up, church. Rise up, people, and praise him. Why? Because he deserves it. Simply that. No questions asked. And it's saying all-encompassing, the people who are in the valley and the people who are in the mountain, that no matter what it is, that he just deserves our praise. So I encourage you all to rise up with me and praise him this morning because he truly does deserve all the praise. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing his praise all over the land.
in praise to you for your word, Lord, your glorious King. I lift my voice in love to you, in love to you. I lift my voice. I lift my voice in love to you, in love to you. I lift my voice in praise to you, in praise. reminded as Richard was praying of something that many times we forget. Especially in the midst of these days of apprehension where we remember our faults, our sins. And in the Day of Atonement, which starts this afternoon, we tend to look at our failures, look at our past sins, our present sins, and the thought that we won't be able to stop sinning. And sometimes we forget something that until Jesus came. Although David had discovered it, it remained hidden in the law. As the Jews did their best to try to fulfill that law and saw the law giver and not the God that loved mankind, created him. And the thought was that God stopped loving man when he sinned in the Garden of Eden. As if God discovered suddenly something new. No, he knew all the time. And a few discovered. They even had trouble with scriptures, including them in the, what we call the Old Testament because of their relating love as in Song of Solomon to our relationship with God. And so many times we forget that he loves us and we need to be reminded. He loves you. He loves me. And there's a song that says, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. What more could he do to prove it? 
His blood is shed. His body was broken. Because He loved us. Oh, how He loves you. Find yourself once again. Oh, how he loves you and me. He loves his people. He loves them that fear him, that honor him, that praise him, that worship him, that love him. The desire to please Him, whose mind turns to Him, even in our failure, we're sad because we want to please Him. Oh, how He loves you and me and our children and our children's children. He loves His children. He loves those that he's called to spend eternity in his home in the place that he has prepared for us that's why the heavens rejoice every time a sinner repents And he takes joy when the saints come home because he loves us. Let us never forget that hidden yet eternal, hidden in plain sight for all those that might care to look, to see. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. my heart these last days at the same time in Eduardo's heart and it's a song that announces a change There is a change. It's very obvious now, these days, these special days, that things have turned. Not only has the tide turned, as he announced to us, but now it can be plainly seen. The movement, the realignment, the change that we are feeling and that is happening when I feel the cold of winter and this cloak of sadness, I need you. All the evil things that shake me, all the words that break me, 
I need you. And that's what these last times have been. Here in this country, in other countries, the sadness, there's a darkness of winter has fallen over mankind. The darkness of being indoors and out of the sun that brings joy. The darkness of winter and the summer that in some countries south of the equator never got to be a summer. It was a winter that fell upon this world increasing suddenly with the loss of daylight with the loss of man's securities with the loss of strength the loss of health even the loss of life around us a cry from the hearts of men that weren't even conscious they were crying like the children of Israel in Egypt the hearts of men have cried out I need you the hearts of children the hearts of mothers fathers as they trembled inside their houses like the Egyptians trembled and the Jews Israelites in their homes during the plagues of Egypt please somebody do something we need help the cry lifted up to heaven Then there's a sound. Over the mountain. Over the sea. Here you come. Run. The one that loves. That loves the world. Over the mountain Over the sea Here you come running My love To me The second verse says do not hide me from your presence. Pull me from these shadows. I need you. Oh, beauty, wrap your arms around me. Sing your song of kindness. I need you. to be
of the Lord. The salvation is mine.
be born filled with the Holy Spirit in this time. They will come out of the womb and with their first breath they will be filled. He will not wait. He will not wait for the time is short.
Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Perhaps some have given up already. That it might be possible. Time has soured your faith. Do you believe or have you given up? Do you believe and or have you given up on your husband? Have you given up your children? Have you given up? Over all the earth means they will be touched. It will reach them. Every knee shall bow. It is written. Every tongue will pro proclaim. It is written. Yes. Prayers will be offered, that were offered will be answered. Every prayer, every tear is held until its fulfillment. Every tear, it is written, are held in his flask. He does not forget. He does not forget. They're held in store. Yes. All of them are held, are remembered. are answered in the day of his answer hallelujah hallelujah for there is no time everything is today in God just as in the Hebrew language there is no past tense or future tense everything is now you say 20 years ago i prayed it's now it's before him today hallelujah every day every year in September when generally I'm in Argentina in a conference I always remember because the conference falls in or about on Rosh Hashanah and every year I'm aware of Rosh Hashanah the 10 days of awe Yom Kippur but in all of my time in the ministry, I cannot remember a time when it was so special as this year. Never do I remember a Rosh Hashanah week with the impact that this year has been Yesterday, in fact, uh, September 26 was special for us as a church because the men gathered, I think for the first time, for, in Hebron, for a special time together. 
And uh, it started Friday night with the offering of a sacrifice by the chief Levite, Eduardo de Leon. I think he offered a black heifer or something like that as a burnt offering to the Lord. Well, actually, he offered the fat to the Lord. That's what he wants. And then it's a lovely time. And then yesterday, September the 26th, Saturday was special. On Friday night, there was a convocation called The Return. I'm sure you probably heard about it. Some of you might have even watched it. They were gathered in the National Mall in Washington, D.C. In the midst of the rain Friday. You could see the rain falling. People gathered for what was called a National Day of Repenting. And on Saturday, thousands gathered in the mall, National Mall, with the Capitol, which is a Congress, in plain view in the background. And they'd gathered there by the thousands to repent, to ask forgiveness for the sins of America for our sins. And people all over the world participated of that. And uh, as we prepared to start our time of prayer in the morning, uh, did you have that file? Is that a yes? yes. Okay. I felt, uh, as you know, Dios Nell arrived on Friday and uh, it was last moment because he was in charge of a radio program and uh, and I felt I don't do this very often in fact I never initiated they always ask me I always say no don't want to go on the radio but uh, once in a while uh, I do if I feel something. This time I call them. I said, I want to share something. And uh, I said, I want to ask. <clears throat> Many times we've prayed for Argentina. And I want to ask now Argentina to pray for us. We are in a very special time here in the United States. We need your prayers. We're in the midst of a revolution, cultural revolution. As the enemy wishes to tear down that which God has done in this country and kept us. And in a very strange uh, event, one of the chief justices, Ruth Ginsburg, died on Rosh Hashanah, a very special occasion. And she has had cancer, I don't know, about five times, and she'd overcome it. And uh, so <clears throat> there was a need for a replacement and uh, everyone was calling God's people for one that would continue, not her legacy, but the legacy of justice of the Constitution, of our godly foundation. And of course, this will be a huge battle as others try to stop that, because it's something that will affect for the next 20, 30 years the judicial system in our country. So I asked for prayer. And uh, Diosnel was present uh, through the internet, on the radio, and in contact with them. So we've asked him to, personally, him to tell us. So is it audio or video? 
audio. Okay, so he passed an audio for us to what happened during that time. It was really spectacular what happened uh, when they began to pray in the radio. And the radio is heard over the internet in many countries. So go ahead. Hello. Soy Claudia. Good morning. I'm Claudia. And I'm uh, sitting by Dios Nel. Claro we are here dice, again in Atlanta. A pesar de los tiempos, estos we are here in spite of these este, difficult times. Saben, like you know, en marzo I left España, in March from here Argentina, to Spain and then from Spain to Argentina. And uh, we just met y again with Dios Nel in August. And being there in Argentina, we always wanted to come and be here to receive our grandson Oliver. But God opened the door, and here we are. We are so wanting to be able to be together with you in the meetings, but meanwhile, we're fulfilling the protocol that the CDC requires of us of Atlanta, so... Here I leave you with your nail. To receive Oliver, our grandson. That was our ob objective. But how do we get here? Last Wednesday, the 23rd of September, we got the ticket for Claudia. And on 24th, Saturday, we were in the Quinta praying together, and Claudia was praying, God, you are in control. Yours are the times. To you make everything good in your time. And I was simply thinking, God, you never arrive late. And so I went and, re and started the radio program. And at 11 o'clock, I received a call from the airline. I said, please call me later. I'm all busy. I thought it was about some detail of the ticket of Claudia. But no, it was to confirm, see if I wanted to travel that same wow. night Imagine along with her. Wow, imagine my surprise. At uh, 118, they called me back to confirm. At uh, 122, I had the ticket emitted in my to be able to go that night and the flight from Buenos Aires to Miami and Miami to Atlanta they had 100% occupation. Not one seat was open. Wow, our God is great. So we arrived the 25th Friday morning, happy, enjoying of the new mercies of that day. That was Friday. And Saturday, Saturday, with Nico, Nicolás, we were going to take part with the Zoom to the prayer of the men that were in Hebron. But just before that, I had to get on the radio in Argentina through the Internet on a program for the young people. That was going to be suspended and a yes, then not, but finally they decided to do the program. And when I was telling my testimony about this marvelous and miraculous trip at the last moment, I was telling them on the radio that we had to be ready because in any moment, God opened the door and with surprises us. And there another surprise arrived. While I was calling to them right on the air, I received a message from Pastor John and uh, I was I did, couldn't join the Zoom meeting for the, because I was waiting to finish with the radio. And he said, I want to talk on the radio. So I made the connection, radio, my home, Hebron, Pastor John, and uh, he asked uh, the people in Argentina to join them with prayer. He explained about the return and the meeting of it, meaning of it. I don't know how, but something happened in the youth program. It was only supposed to be 90 minutes. It was a program of three hours. Las personas... The people began to send their prayers to the radio. They were declaring for the United States. Then they would pray for Argentina. Then they'd pray for Israel and different uh, places in the world. There were three hours of crying out to God, of adults, of youth, all in the same spirit. But that wasn't all. They finished the program and they returned 
a few hours later otra vez hacer for a, again do vivo, two hours more on live because people kept sending their prayers from their hearts poured out before God and with prayers and tears crying out from many provinces in Argentina even from other countries like Spain, England like Israel sí, una yes llamada a call a subir al monte, to go a subir up to the mountain to go up to Nuestro his Dios house soberano está en control. our God sovereign is in control of everything Estuvo, está, he was está there he is and Así he will be in control so we let's be ready because in any Dios moment God will surprise us marvelously with a manifestation of that his great power so we'll be seeing him Lord willing next Sunday Well, what he didn't tell is the fact that uh, we began then to pray, and uh, they're in Hebron, together the men, and uh, not knowing what they were doing there in Argentina in the radio, not knowing what was happening, but uh, I got a message saying that They're all on fire praying there in Argentina. Says so something very important is happening there in the radio, and uh, they're praying for Trump, they're praying for the United States, and uh, so. A while later, I got another message from Eliezer. Uh, that he was declaring, no, from Dios, no, I'm sorry, that Eliezer was declaring that the son of justice has risen over the Supreme Court of the United States. He was declaring that. Later, I got a message from Eliezer saying, while I was there in the radio talking and praying, my eyes were open. And this is what he told me. We were in the program, we were praying and asking God for the U.S. When my eyes were opened and I saw the Capitol, the Capitol building, which is Congress. And I saw a light coming in and it began taking a few of the places there in that, that uh, hall. And little by little that light began to grow and get greater and greater until it became strong like a sun. I could barely look at it. But then I saw that it occupied a little more than three-fourths of that place. And the place uh, of that light did not cover the darkness. It was submerged inside of a very... Uh, terrible darkness, but it filled three-fourths of that place. Second Chronicles 7.14, we know that scripture says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Well, During the morning, as we were praying, when we finished praying, we went back and started watching uh, the return in uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, they were repenting. That was the, the, the theme. It's all about repentance and asking forgiveness for our sins, for the sins of the church, the sins of the pastors, the sins of the church, the sins of the nation. And at 12 o'clock, There was another group led by Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, that led a march of prayer for the healing of the United States. For two hours, they marched from the Lincoln Memorial all the way down the uh, mall, which is almost uh, two miles, 1.8 miles long, from the Lincoln Memorial to the Capitol Building down the National Mall, praying. And uh, so I thought it was very interesting because the scripture I just read you, God says, if my people will repent and pray 
And so these two things fulfill the two things that God said that we had to do. Uh, and Eduardo, can you share with us something very interesting that uh, happened to him in relation to the prayers of Argentina? Okay. If you want to share what you thought first, that's okay too. <laughs> you want to expose yourself, that's fine. So, this song. So, we were finishing breakfast yesterday, and John says, Well, guys, uh, I might have to uh, talk to the radio in Argentina. It's just going to be for a few minutes. We might say hi, or you said, Just give me a few minutes. I'm going to be live in the radio. Uh, so John started saying hi to all the audience and started explaining what was the call about. So he said, I'm calling to ask for the church in Argentina to pray for the United States and to pray for the Supreme Court and for these times. And of course, immediately my flesh kicked in and I say, oh my God, he's, he's asking Argentina to pray for us. Have you watched the news lately? So in my heart, not in my heart at that point, it was in my mind. I say, the church in Argentina have their own problems with the church, with the government, with everything else that's going on. I know they're praying for Argentina. I don't think they're going to have time to pray for us in a meaningful way. But of course, God, you know, He told me I was wrong. Because uh, after our time of prayer, there was really nice when all of us opened up and asked God for mercy and forgiveness. Um, and then we went back to watch the event and we were seeing all this uh, all these people, one after the other one, asking for mercy, asking for forgiveness. And all of a sudden I can feel my spirit, God telling me, I'm going to reward Argentina greatly. Because they put aside their needs. And they they interceding for another nation. And of course at that moment, you know, kind of wipe my eyes said, oh, yeah, it's very nice what we're watching. And, but that kept going in my heart all afternoon, even in my house when I got there last night. I couldn't, I couldn't get rid of that feeling in my spirit. And I, just, I told pastor this morning what I felt. Argentina's going to be rewarded for what they're doing because they're putting aside their own needs and interceding for this nation. And there was a word coming in Spanish, it's botín. So I think in English it's bounty. So they're going to be part of the bounty of this nation. All the glory be to God. What days of awe. And uh, also yesterday when the a group that was praying arrived there to the Capitol building in their prayer. President Trump issued a proclamation from the White House. And that proclamation says, proclamation in support of the return, national and global day of prayer and repentance underway as thousands have gathered on the mall of Washington DC to march and to pray. And this was his proclamation. On this inaugural national day of prayer and return, the first lady and I join Christians here in the millions of Christians here in the United States and around the world in prayer. And we turn our hearts to our Lord and Savior. 
Our great nation was founded by people and women of deep abiding faith, a faith that has stood the test of time. 400 years ago, early American settlers trusted their lives to his providence and braved the voyage to the new world. And from the pilgrims that sought his protection aboard the Mayflower. And it's very interesting that yesterday it was 400 years since the sailing of the Mayflower. To the countless believers who today bow their heads to ask for his guidance during these unprecedented unprecedented times, our country continues to turn to the Lord. Following in our ancestors' footsteps, we continue the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence that provides us enduring strength and reassurance in our times of need. The trials and tribulations of the American people have faced over the past several months have been great, and yet, as we have seen time and again the resolve of our citizenry, fortified by our faith in God, has guided us through these hardships and helped us to unite as one nation under God. As we continue to combat the challenges ahead of us, we must remember the sage words of President George Washington during his first presidential address. The propitious smiles of heaven, he said, can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained, he said. And as a country and a people, let us renew our commitment to this abiding and timeless principles. Today, I am pleased to join my voice with yours in thanking God for blessing this nation with great power and responsibility, with reverence, humility, and thanksgiving. We beg for his continued guidance and protection. Donald John Trump. Amen. Yes, as I said, what days of awe they've been. Awesome days, truly. And tonight at sundown, just in a few hours, is the beginning of Yom Kippur. As I said, and you know, I mentioned last week, Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, begins 10 days after the New Year, or Rosh Hashanah. And that begins today, Sunday, September 27th in the evening, and ends tomorrow, Monday, at sundown, September 28th. Yom Kippur, or Day of Atonement, is the most important and sacred of holidays for the Jewish people. It's the day where the Jews consider them themselves the closest of the whole year, the closest to God. And why should we celebrate the Jewish days of atonement? Because God said, commanded through Moses in Exodus 30 and verse 10, Aaron shall make atonement on that day once a year with the blood of the sin offerings of atonements. Once a year shall he make atonement on it throughout all your generations. So the day of atonement was a commandment of God to be kept throughout all the generations of his people. For he ended saying, for it is most holy to the Lord. It's is considered the holiest of all the holy days. It's considered tomorrow, Yom Kippur, the Sabbath of all Sabbaths. And you know, even though the sacrifice that was to be offered on Yom Kippur by Aaron and his descendants, he said it's perpetual. The only change was the offering that was sacrificed. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament was written 
just shortly before the destruction of Jerusalem. And with the destruction of Jerusalem, there's the destruction of the altar. And during the siege, during the siege of Rome, the last animal was sacrificed on the altar. And never has there been a sacrifice since then. In Hebrews chapter 9, it tells us, But Christ, having become the high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, which means that this building was still standing when this was written, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So the writer of Hebrews is referencing the cross that already passed and the temple that was still standing. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Purge your consciences from dead works to serve the living God. So shortly after that, the temple, Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. Not one stone left upon another. And there was never another sacrifice till this day. And as I mentioned in my last week's message, The day of atonement is the day of the sealing. The day when the books are opened, where all the past year's sins are written. And then after ten days of awe or consideration, when we're given the chance to repent and to be cleansed, the book is again closed and sealed on the Day of Atonement. It's very interesting. The name atonement, the meaning of the name in Hebrew. The word in Hebrew atonement is kafar, which means to cover, but also to purge and make an atonement or reconciliation. To cover specifically means to cover with pitch or tar, also called bitumen. Noah's Ark that was built with uh, was called gopher wood. It was covered by God's command with atonement, with kafar. It was covered with tar, painted everything with tar. Tar seals. Tar makes it to be buoyant, to float on the water. Like Moses' little uh, ark made of, of uh, uh, reeds was painted, was covered with pitch, with tar. And the mother placed it, as you know, young little baby Moses, on the waters of the Nile. The tar sealed, made it float over the waters of judgment as God destroyed humanity at that time, except for Noah and his family. So, as I said last week, Yom Kippur is a day that God decides the person's fate for the next year. So the Jews are encouraged to ask for forgiveness during those 10 days before Yom Kippur. Ask forgiveness for sins committed during the past year. The Sabbath of Sabbaths, upon which one must afflict one's soul. This is the mandate of Leviticus 16, 29 for this day. And like I said, the only thing that changed of the rules of Yom Kippur, not the sacrifice, but the fact that the sacrifice would be now, from the moment the sacrifice ceased, God provided the sacrifice of his son on the cross, Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Jews. And Hebrews 10 verse 9 says, 
Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, speaking of the law, that he may establish the second, by the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. In verse 11, And every priest stand daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So the need for repentance has not changed. The atonement, the day of atonement has not changed. What has changed has been one sacrifice to take the place of the daily or monthly or yearly sacrifice of animals. But the blood of Jesus is a sacrifice that we still remember as we claim for us the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ. And past sins are atoned. And that's what the day of atonement was. They were covered by the blood of Jesus Christ as they were at one time by the blood of animals. Past sins were atoned on the day of sacrifices. I ran across a scripture that uh, I don't remember reading before. You know, sometimes you, you read a scripture and you says, who put that in the Bible today? That wasn't there last month. That wasn't there last year. That happened to you? You see a scripture says, where does this come from? I don't remember this. And it's Psalm 7, 11, where it says, God judges the righteous. Now, I can, I can understand God judging the wicked, but God judging the righteous, and that's the message of these days. And the need for even the righteous to claim atonement through the blood. But it's the other part of the scripture that I never noticed before. The second part says God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Wow, I said. Every day God is angry with the wicked. And then I said, I never thought that is God continually angry then. Why doesn't he get angry and say, okay, I'll kill you all, destroy you all, send you all to hell? Because another scripture says every morning, every morning, he renews his mercy. Every day. The anger rises up as he sees the sins of the wicked and even sees our sins. But thank God that long suffering is his attribute. That every morning that anger, that call for justice, Mercy meets justice. And the world remains standing. His mercy endures. How long? Forever. And yet we know, for he said, it will not always be. There is a time when God says, my time is over. I'm going to make a new world, a new heaven, a new earth. Three things are done on the Day of Atonement. Three things are done by the people. The first is what we did yesterday with the people and the return. Three things are done. The first is repent and ask God for forgiveness. After asking forgiveness of others during these past 10 days, on the Day of Atonement is when 
They repent and ask God for forgiveness. The second thing they do on Yom Kippur is give an offering. We're going to do that today. It's just a coincidence that today is the day, the last day of the month that we generally give an offering for the poor. And that's what they do. They give gifts. Even the, the, even the non-religious religious Jews give and send gift, gift packages. Sometimes, like it's a, a custom to have apple slices. I preached on this one day. Apple slices with honey. I remember one day I brought honey from Hebron and uh, spoke to you about that, uh, the custom of the Jews. And they, so they send gift back, pack, uh, packages or baskets one to another. And the third thing they do on Yom Kippur is fast. They fast on the Day of Atonement. During uh, the sacrifice on Friday night, one of the men asked me, and uh, I won't tell you who he is, he plays the trumpet. Uh, well, actually, what I meant to say, he played the shofar, because Sergio took a shofar, and all the men took turns playing or trying to play the shofar. And I don't know if that'll go by CDC practices, but I saw them outside on the, on the, on the deck passing Sergio shofar one to another, some spitting into it. Yeah, because some of the, some didn't know how to sound it, so they sort of <laughs> into it. And, uh, I must say, the next to the best one to play was the trumpet player. But you know who really made that shofar sound? Alex. Wow. He belted it out. I think I heard Moose answer from Canada. And I said that. I think, look around, there might be Moose coming to that call. He did a very good job. So maybe you should be our official shofar player. But yes, the third thing they do, repent, give an offering, and fast. It's the great day of atonement. It's the great annual day of humiliation and expiation for the sins of the nation. And that fast, interesting enough, didn't stop after the cross. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 9, we read that the Apostle Paul now, missionary Paul now, church founder, the writer of the epistles that laid the foundation for the church, he wrote this in Acts 26, 9. Now, when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and he talked to them. So he still kept the fast of Yom Kippur. And as I mentioned last week, and I mentioned just now, Yom Kippur is a day of sealing. Last week, I didn't mention it in the message, but I had it in my notes. And I want to, to mention it today. Ezekiel chapter 9. And verse 4, the sealing and marking of the people that repent. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. God says, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark or seal on the men that are sighing and groaning over all the abominations that are committed there in Jerusalem. And it's very interesting that the, the word, the mark, that God commands his angels to place upon the foreheads of the men that are repenting of sins. That word Hebrew is literally tau. And tau is the name 
of the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And in the times uh, of, of Ezekiel, that letter was the form of a cross. Tau is not only the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, but it's also the first letter of the Torah. The first letter is the cross. Others have remembered the difficult times of the early Christians and how to them the cross was their emblem, was their mark. In fact, during the persecution, when it was illegal and very bad for your health, deadly, to be a Christian in Rome, they had to somehow find out who else was a Christian. And so many times, there was two ways they'd do it. Once, if they had a stick or a walking stick, and they met someone just talking, they'd just write the letter Tau on the ground, just a cross. They'd say, well, what's that? You're not a Christian, are you? you? No, no, that's, I'm going through the alphabet. That's the last letter of the alphabet. Oh, really? Yeah. See, that's the Hebrew letter, the Roman. This is the Hebrew letter, Tau. That's our last letter. Oh, okay. I thought you were a Christian. I was going to take you to the police. And uh, if not, then the other guy saw the sign and he'd nod. Yes, I'm a Christian. Tau. The seal, the mark over those that repent. And that's what the cross is. If we are soldiers of the cross, it's our mark, it's our flag. It's a meaning that we have repented of our sins and have believed on the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ to wash us of our sins. And there was another way that they'd express it. You know, not very long ago, uh, I, you know, I used to say to people, okay. But now I learned you can't say, okay. That's some kind of bad symbol. That gets people mad. In fact, there was a guy that, uh, that uh, through the window to another car just did this symbol. Okay, okay. And I mean, they almost shot him. But you know, that was another symbol they used, the early Christians, when they didn't have a stick to write towel. They grabbed this finger like that and cross it with their thumb. Hi. Hi. How you doing? And they'd see that cross. They'd see that thumb on their index making a cross. The mark that I am a follower, that I am a believer, that I have repented. How about you? Have you repented? Come on, try it. There we go. That's what the Christians used to do. Incognito. To communicate their belief on Christ. Tau. The seal. The sign of Christ. So today, we will remember just a few hours before the Day of Atonement, after having repented, remembered our sins, and prayed and asked for forgiveness, not only for our sins, but for the sins of the nation, of our government, of its citizens. Today, I want us to participate with God's sacrifice that he arrange for us so we will remember his sacrifice with the Lord's Supper today so we will do at least two of these three things today 
Those that wish to, of course, bring your offering to the poor. And then after leaving your offering, we will come to the table of God's atonement that he has provided for us. Jesus, the day he was to be offered. He took the bread, broke it. It was the night of the Passover. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and that said, this is my blood. Shed for the remission of sins. Of course, they didn't have the slightest idea. Because they had all finished eating the lamb which was the sacrifice for sin. They had no idea that they were present in the moments that were about to change forever the sacrifice. Were the daily sacrifice that the priests would offer. The sacrifice that was offered on the Day of Atonement would cease forever and the atonement would be made with his flesh and with his blood. This is the sacrifice of atonement. This is the Tao. This is God's provision for us. And then you can decide if you want to fast or not. It is up to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for including us with your people. Thank you for grafting us into the tree of Israel. We bless you, Israel. We bless you and remember you. We bless you, Jerusalem. We pray for your peace. For in your peace will be the peace of the nations. We bless you, Jerusalem. We bless you. We remember you. For you are the root from which salvation reached us Gentiles. And you will also, you will awaken that it's your Messiah that brought forgiveness to the world, sins. Lord, may the eyes be opened to receive you, Yeshua, as the only Messiah that could fit the prophecies, that could fulfill every promise that was given for the Messiah. Lord, I bless your people. I bless Jerusalem. And I bless you, Lord, and thank you for sending your Son. Thank you that the days of awe as we observe our sins can end 
with a day of relief as the books that contain the memories of our sins are erased, covered, tau, with black pitch so that no one can see our sins are covered. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that our sins can be atoned Thank you, Jesus, for your obedience. Thank you, Jesus, for going with joy to the cross. Thank you that it's as relevant today as it was on the day you died. And we remember, we remember because you said, do this in remembrance of me. How could we forget? We remember today. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome to partake whenever you want. Hatima Tova. May you be sealed in the book of life. God bless you.